I'm here with Mark Drew. And this is a wonderful plane that you brought here to the air show today. Thank you very much. How'd you get into flying? Uh, as a child, I envied pilots and the guys at the air show, such as today. And uh, just a passion became reality and a dream that came true. Did someone in your family fly? Yes, my father uh, dealt with um, aviation post-war in radar and guidance and missile control. Uh, he was the first to fly uh, recreational-wise. But I took it to the extreme beyond the two older brothers, and then I was the fourth to fly to take it all the way. Did you fly in the war? Uh, just mentally, never physically. Well, thank you for bringing the plane today. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about the plane? Yes, it's a 1957 North American T-28 trainer. T uh, in most airplanes would stand for trainer. This was used on the USSS Lexington in Pensacola, Florida, uh, as a trainer for the naval cadets to learn how to fly to land on aircraft carriers. Uh, it was retired um, from the service and all services that we have uh, in 1985. And this was um, last used uh, in Pensacola in 84. And uh, I pretty much preserved it, um, restored it to this condition. You have pretty much preserved it and restored it. Yes. Well, thank you for doing that. It's, it's really something to see this warbird. Yes, it is. Uh, I never actually saw any wartime action, though they were used uh, in other parts of the world, in Laos, Honduras, uh, and uh, as a reconnaissance aircraft in Vietnam, along with the Sky Raider. Can we have a closer up look? Absolutely. This is the North American T-28. Uh, it's a nine-cylinder. Originally, they came with, with this, is a seven-cylinder. Uh, the nine-cylinder is a 1425-horsepower engine uh, using 100 low-lead octane fuel. Um, and back in the 60s, they came out with 130 low-lead. So due to time, they changed the low-lead to 100 low-lead. Uh, the plane burns a gallon of oil per hour. And the fuel burn on this, to be conservative, is a gallon per minute which is 60 gallons an hour. You do the math and come up with that figure. Um, I'm gonna point to you, this is an aftermarket modification that the military did not have. It's called an oil shutoff. And so with most radial engines, they would drip oil after you're done flying and they're parked, and oil would just gush all over the front landing gear. And then when you restart the engine, oil left in the cylinders would shoot out the exhaust, creating a mess on the side of the airplane. Uh, but the aftermarket kit allows the oil to be shut off after shutdown on landing to keep the oil from going into the cylinders to avoid that mess when firing it up or when it's parked dripping oil below, creating a mess on your front landing gears. An expensive modification, but um, well worth its weight in gold. The T-28 came out with two different blades. This is a three-bladed propeller used on the nine-cylinder versus a two-bladed prop used on the seven-cylinder. They came out with the three-bladed prop for more efficiency and because of the bigger engine. On the aircraft carriers, they would shorten the blade tips so when you came in the land on a carrier landing, when the tail hook would reach the cable and landing on a deck, it would cause the prop to hit the front of the ship, breaking the propeller. So they had to shorten them by two inches and creating it flat so that when they do land, it wouldn't strike the bottom of the ship on the ground. Uh, the propeller is an adjustable propeller like you would have in a 10-speed bicycle with different gears. So when you're flying, you can adjust your propeller for different gear ratios for better performance. These are ordinance that they didn't actually use these on trainers. This is a training aircraft. They did have them on the D model T-28s used in Vietnam. 
Uh, these are 100 pound fragment bombs. This is a 250 pound uh, fragment bomb. Exact replicas of what they used. Uh, they were using napalm on these as well. They used the T-28s with some machine guns on them, the 50 caliber machine gun, which they were using it for small arms fire and reconnaissance. Never heavy artillery battling with these, more or less picking up uh, troops that were uh, shot down in the field. Uh, they also used these um, in the war in France and uh, Honduras. They were heavily armed and being trained over there as well. To fly this, it's indescribable. It's definitely a race car, sports car. Um, the feeling, no comparison. I enjoyed flying it. I fly it at least four times a month, uh, mainly uh, to keep myself up to par. You need to fly a warbird pretty often to stay current with the conditions of the airplane, I'm unlike a normal civilian uh, passenger airplane. Uh, warbirds, uh, you're always being trained. You have a lot, a, a lot of um, criteria you gotta follow, rules with the FAA with the uh, warbirds. Um, but once you're flying it, it comes back second nature. Uh, it's a tandem airplane, meaning passenger sits behind you. Back in the naval training, the teacher would sit in the back and the student would sit in the front. Uh, you both have controls front and back, throttle, control stick, and radios. So either front or back, you can maintain the airplane. Uh, these do not have ejection seats as some of them did, being the D model used in Vietnam. So if something were to go wrong, your canopy would open up with the manual switch and you would have to jump out with your parachute and uh, hopefully you'll make it on the ground.